December 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Micah chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. This is the prophetic message that the Lord gave to Micah of Moresheth. He delivered this message during the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. The prophecies pertain to Samaria and Jerusalem. Listen, all you nations, pay attention, all inhabitants of earth. The sovereign Lord will testify against you. The Lord will accuse you from his majestic palace. Look, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling place. He will descend and march on the earth's mountaintops. The mountains will disintegrate beneath him, and the valleys will be split in two. The mountains will melt like wax in a fire. The rocks will slide down like water cascading down a steep slope. All this is because of Jacob's rebellion and the sins of the nation of Israel. How has Jacob rebelled, you ask? Samaria epitomizes their rebellion. Where are Judah's pagan worship centers, you ask? They are right in Jerusalem. I will turn Samaria into a heap of ruins in an open field. Vineyards will be planted there. I will tumble the rubble of her stone walls down into the valley and tear down her fortifications to their foundations. All her carved idols will be smashed to pieces. All her metal cult statues will be destroyed by fire. I will make a waste heap of all her images. Since she gathered the metal as a prostitute collects her wages, the idols will become a prostitute's wages again. For this reason I will mourn and wail. I will walk around barefoot and without my outer garments. I will howl like a wild dog and screech like an owl, for Samaria's disease is incurable. It has infected Judah, it has spread to the leadership of my people, and has even contaminated Jerusalem. Don't spread the news in Gath. Don't shed even a single tear. In Beth Leafra, sit in the dust. Residents of Shafer pass by in nakedness and humiliation. The residents of Zeanon can't leave their city. Bethazel mourns. He takes from you what he desires. Indeed, the residents of Meroth hope for something good to happen, though the Lord has sent disaster against the city of Jerusalem. Residents of Lachish hitch the horses to the chariots. You influence daughter Zion to sin, for Israel's rebellious deeds can be traced back to you. Therefore, you will have to say farewell to Morasheth Gath. The residents of Axib will be as disappointing as a dried-up well to the kings of Israel. Residents of Marisha, a conqueror, will attack you. The leaders of Israel shall flee to Adullam. Shave your heads bald as you mourn for the children you love. Shave your foreheads as bald as an eagle, for they are taken from you into exile. Those who devise sinful plans are as good as dead. Those who dream about doing evil as they lie in bed. As soon as morning dawns, they carry out their plans because they have the power to do so. They confiscate the fields they desire and seize the houses they want. They defraud people of their homes and deprive people of the land they have inherited. Therefore the Lord says this, Look, I am devising disaster for this nation. It will be like a yoke from which you cannot free your neck. You will no longer walk proudly, for it will be a time of catastrophe. In that day, people will sing this taunt song to you. They will mock you with this lament. We are completely destroyed. They sell off the property of my people. How they remove it from me. They assign our fields to the conqueror. Therefore, no one will assign you land in the Lord's community. Don't preach with such impassioned rhetoric, they say excitedly. These prophets should not preach of such things. We will not be overtaken by humiliation. Does the family of Jacob say, The Lord's patience cannot be exhausted. He would never do such things. To be sure, my commands bring a reward for those who obey them. But you rise up as an enemy against my people. You steal a robe from a friend from those who pass by peacefully as if returning from a war. You wrongly evict widows among my people from their cherished homes. You defraud their children of their prized inheritance. But you are the ones who will be forced to leave. For this land is not secure. 
sin will thoroughly destroy it. If a lying windbag should come and say, I'll promise you blessings of wine and beer, he would be just the right preacher for these people. I will certainly gather all of you, O Jacob. I will certainly assemble those Israelites who remain. I will bring them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in the middle of a pasture. They will be so numerous that they will make a lot of noise. The one who can break through barriers will lead them out. They will break out, pass through the gate, and leave. Their kings will advance before them. The Lord himself will lead them. I said, Listen, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of the nation of Israel. You ought to know what is just. Yet you hate what is good and love what is evil. You flay my people's skin and rip the flesh from their bones. You devour my people's flesh, strip off their skin, and crush their bones. You chop them up like flesh in a pot, like meat in a kettle. Some day these sinners will cry to the Lord for help, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time because they have done such wicked deeds. This is what the Lord says. The prophets who mislead my people are as good as dead. If someone gives them enough to eat, they offer an oracle of peace. But if someone does not give them food, they are ready to declare war on him. Therefore night will fall and you will receive no visions. It will grow dark and you will no longer be able to read the omens. The sun will set on these prophets and the daylight will turn to darkness over their heads. The prophets will be ashamed. The omen readers will be humiliated. All of them will cover their mouths for they will receive no divine oracles. But I am full of the courage that the Lord's Spirit gives and have a strong commitment to justice. This enables me to confront Jacob with its rebellion and Israel with its sin. Listen to this, you leaders of the family of Jacob, you rulers of the nation of Israel. You hate justice and pervert all that is right. You build Zion through bloody crimes, Jerusalem through unjust violence. Her leaders take bribes when they decide legal cases. Her priests proclaim rulings for profit, and her prophets read omens for pay. Yet they claim to trust the Lord and say, The Lord is among us. Disaster will not overtake us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed up like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of ruins. And the Temple Mount will become a hill overgrown with brush. God, I had a person, can't quite call him a friend, we'll say person I know, who is a fellow Christian and called me out on Facebook because I was fussing about Google and its worldly practices compared to a Christian practices. And without going into the argument, my basic stance was um, same thing as back in the Old Testament, the powers that were in power at the time you gave them that power uh, and you gladly took it away when they didn't use it the way you wanted them to. Uh, same thing nowadays. I see not giant nations, although living in the United States were one of those, but I see big corporations that have a lot of sway with people. I would say Google has sometimes more sway than the government of the United States. Um, I see big companies like Google and other companies like that in that same fashion uh, they very much remind me especially in Micah when he's talking about kind of black and white good and evil they remind me of that that time where these people who had power could pe put people into positions of thinking it's okay to be worldly to be worshiping idols to make fun of religion to make fun of you God I'm not a big fan of religion, but I make fun of you, God. Uh, it reminds me so much of the Old Testament. Anyways, that was what my basic thesis statement was on Facebook. And this other person just went after me, fellow Christian, and told me, I'm just going to paraphrase, basically told me to quit judging that that's God's position to do that, that that's your position to do that. And, and as 
eloquently as I possibly could. I gently answered her and then told her I'd be more than happy to, to continue this conversation in person or outside of, of the Facebook viewing public because it was hard. It, it was all these non-Christians who were on my list watching this fight. I'm going to put quotation marks around that fight happened between two Christians and it truly broke my heart. You can see I'm still like really upset about it. N not because I took it personally, but because of how much effect that potentially could have had on other people. A and also she was wrong <laughs> in the sense that I totally agree. We shouldn't judge people as far as some of the specifics that we've been shown in the Bible. But you also told people over and over again to call out certain situations, especially when it's a thing where you're seeing other people going in the wrong direction. I think we're going to be taken to task for not calling out some of those situations, for allowing the worldly things to happen without making a stance. And I love Micah because he's making a stance and he's making it during a time where it would have been really bad to do so. Uh, he even talks about people are paid to make good revelations, good prophecies, because uh, that's what people wanted to hear. They didn't want to hear the truth, good or bad. Uh, he goes on to talk, the prophets will be ashamed, the omen readers will be humiliated, all of them will cover their mouths, for they will receive no divine oracles. For I am full of the courage that the Lord's Spirit gives and have a strong commitment to justice. This enables me to confront Jacob with its rebellion and Israel with its sin. It breaks my heart when a fellow Christian sins. It breaks my heart when I sin too, but when a fellow Christian sins. It also breaks my heart to see the world sin. And some of these books in the Bible are about specific people and, and their choice choices, good and bad. But a lot of them, especially Old, Test Old Testament, are about huge nations as one group of people making wrong choices or right choices and how you react to, to their wrong and right choice. And I think about today, like I said, I think about Google and Amazon and eBay and Facebook and the worldly choices that they're making and how you're responding to that as well and how your people are responding to that. I truly believe we have a responsibility not to judge, but to make a stand in certain situations when people are calling out for a worldly view. Even though I'm going to be attacked, I truly believe with all my heart that I am to stand up against that without question. And to me, I think that's different than judgment. Just like Micah says, this enables me to confront Jacob with his rebellion. Having worldly, gigantic, large national companies speak volumes about worldly nature and provide a multitude of idols to us. Yeah, I have a problem with that. And I'm glad that Micah did too. God, the part I, I haven't covered with Micah that obviously Micah did is even, even though you obviously took care of the evil doer, evil doers back then as you do today and will in the future. He also shows this amazing, and we'll see it even more in the next couple chapters, this amazing, compassionate, sovereign Lord who, as a shepherd, gathers up his remnant, gather, gathers up his sheep, and gently, with grace and mercy, takes care of them. I think Mike is powerful because it's very opposite ends of the spectrum. The most evil and their repercussions to the people trying to be righteous to your people and, and how you treat them. And I like that because I'm kind of a black and white kind of girl as well. So I really understand a lot of what Mike is saying and how he's saying it. God, I thank you for being the God of passion, the God of love, the God of discipline, the God of righteousness, the God of justice, and the God of grace. I thank you for being all those things in my life, sometimes all in the same hour. <laughs> you love us so much. You desire a relationship with us beyond anything that we understand. Allow us to humbly come with you on the path that you have for us, allowing us to worship you, glorify you, and do whatever we need to do for your kingdom. 
I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.